over there. Cool, thank you. Pulling on board the USS Coral Sea and spent 11 months engaged in combat operations off Vietnam. Assigned to divert aircraft site at Da Nang, salvaging parts from uh, damaged aircraft for two weeks. Upon return from USS Coral Sea deployment, did weapons deployments to Fallon, Nevada, and on board USS Constellation. Received orders to factory school for the A-7 attack aircraft in Dallas, Texas. Wow. Married Sandra K. Dyer while assigned A-7 factory school. <laughs> Upon completion of school, ordered to NAS Lamore, California, to the aircraft intermediate maintenance for two-year tour. Broke my left leg knee at Lamore and welcomed first son, Linda Derrick Smith, uh, for son birth. From, <laughs> from Lamore, received orders to patrol squadron 22 at Barbers Point, Hawaii. Back to aircraft flight duties, deploying to Okinawa for seven months, supporting Southeast area operations, including a six week assignment to Cameron Bay, Republic of South Vietnam. Back to Okinawa, then back to Barbers Point, conducting flight operations and anti-submarine warfare training and in special operations assignments in ADAC, Alaska, mm -hmm. Guam, and Midway Island. Orders to Aviation Ordnance Sea School in Jacksonville, Florida, followed where I graduated with honor list honors and was appointed to warrant officer status. From Sea School at Jacksonville, I went to warrant officer school at Pensacola, Florida, and then orders to Cameron Bay, Republic of South Vietnam. You want to take a little while for care? Yeah. Oh, Carter wanted to read. You want to keep going, kid? Mm -hmm. Arrived, you see it in the way, that paragraph? Arrived in Vietnam in, in November 1970. I was replacing and stun John Olson as weapons officer. The Viet, is that Vietnam? Viet Cong? Viet the Viet Cong fired rockets as farewell for Ensign Olson and welcome to me. Um, <laughs> hey, you want? So he's saying they shot hey. missiles at him to uh, send the old guy off and to welcome Papa. It's not much of a welcome or a uh, send off, is it? They, w they weren't really honoring us. <laughs> He's being sarcastic. The Viet Cong was the enemy. Yeah, the Viet Cong was the, the, the other side. Right. They shot they, us. They was them. the bad guys. <laughs> so they killed the other person? No, they didn't no. kill him, but they just shot us as they tried to. Mr. Olsen's um, still alive, isn't he? Um, Olsen, A1 yeah. Ed Lawson fell down as we were running to the armory, and I fell over him. I still remember the rocket shrap shrapnel shrapnel passing over us as we lay on the ground. L. Sign Olson was on, was in his bunk when the first rocket hit and shrapnel shrapnel missed um, him by inches. This was on the night in Sign Olson was leaving on his flight. Back to the USA. Mom, can you take some? Mm -hmm. I don't have my glasses on. And ensign is pronounced ensign, just so as you know. We stayed on alert until midnight and then took Ensign Olsen to his flight. Additional rocket attacks and attempts by the Viet Cong to blow up the Mica Bridge? Mica. Mica Bridge that connected Cam Ron Peninsula to the mainland. Um, occurred infrequently. But about six months into my tour, I assumed uh, duties as physical security officer in addition to weapons officer. The security officer job also included patrol of the Mika River using Boston whalers and Kenner ski barges. Protecting the Mika Bridge was the most difficult because of swimmer sapper attacks. Is that right? Sapper? Sapper, yeah. We never lost a man, but the Viet Cong lost a few. The sappers were, what's that word, Pop? You see it? Successful in blowing up the U.S. Air Force ammunition site about 10 miles from Cameron Navy. The U.S. AF, U.S. Air Force site, um, 
having a hard time reading them. Steward, Air Force, Army, Navy, and South Vietnam military munitions, including the 15,000 pound special purpose bombs. When the 15,000 pounders storage blew up, the command control center at Cameron Bay was damaged, and the aircraft hangars were severely damaged. Now that was an explosion 10 miles away. 10 miles. And it, it uh, damaged where you guys were? Wow, so when 15,000 pounders go off, anything can happen. My goodness. Our secondary command control site was at the armory. We had to run on foot from the primary command control to the secondary site, about 150 yards, as the revetmented revet storage sites blew up. The blast would knock a man off his feet if exposed to Cameron Navy. My goodness. Cameron Navy base was closed in 1972, being turned over to US Army forces. I left Cameron in 1972, bound for Jacksonville, Florida, as the weapons officer for Carrier Air Group 20. Two-year tour with challenging readiness issues, spent more time on deployments at squadron sites in Texas, Tennessee, Michigan, Georgia, Virginia, Louisiana, Arizona, Nevada, Puerto Rico, California, and shipboard aircraft carriers. Transitioned four squadrons to fleet-ready aircraft, completed conventional weapons readiness inspections, and developed nuclear weapons technical proficiency capability. Um, orders to Guantanamo, Cuba followed. So, dumb question here. Why are there Navy facilities in some of these states? Like, Tennessee wouldn't think of having Navy facilities. We have squadrons there. Squadrons. Aircraft squadrons. Gotcha. They, they, they don't bunch them up on one, one base. They send them out to various locations. Interesting. Wow. But I'm with you. It just seems weird that Navy has a base in Tennessee. Yeah. Well, in Arizona, too, right? Arizona's Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. If anybody wants to take a, a run, just tell me. I'll keep going. Arriving at Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, as weapons officer, I was advised by the commanding officer that I would also serve as the Naval Air Station security officer and that my family would be assigned to quarters at the Naval Air Station versus assignment to quarters at the Naval Station where the commissary, the hospital, the school, and main Navy Exchange were located. Only seven officer quarters were located on the Naval Air Station. A ferry ride was the only transportation between the Naval Air Station and the Naval Station, and that routinely took half an hour. Our assigned quarters uh, were not ready, so we lived in a closed, what do you call that? Is it? B.O.Q. Bachelor Officer Quarters. <laughs> a closed Bachelor Officer Quarters, and died at the enlisted mess galley for two weeks. We soon occupied quarters and started adjustment to get up. Wild dogs, snakes, and banana rats, as well as teeth, a biting gnat, lived there also. Security officer duties were frustrating with drug problems. Marine enlisted men looking for someone to fight. Frequent Cuban nationals showing up asking for asylum. Weapons officer duties were for the men, uh, were for the most part, easy except for the bombing range used by squadron and visiting fleet range use. Drugs were the big problem. Jamaican and Haitian employees, as well as weekly flights to and from Gitmo for personnel, personnel recreation of military dependents and employees, was always difficult to counter. The Navy Investigative Service, NIS, not much help, preferring to deal with the Navy, naval base problems and mostly ignoring the naval air station problems. I think they didn't like ferry rides. <laughs> uh, there was no stopping the drugs coming in, sealed in coffee cans, wine bottles, and the U.S. mail. There were frequent, frequent court marshals and captain's mast. The two bases were combined, and I became the provost marshal with seven months left on my tour. Twice the headaches and six times the land area to manage. <laughs> the command moved all the chemical weapons out of Gitmo during my two years at Gitmo. We were happy to leave Gitmo, but were disappointed with orders to USS Guam, based out of Norfolk, Virginia. USS Guam is a ship carter. Oh. Orders to the USS Guam, a 
CNO, Chief of Naval Operations. Chief of Naval Operations Directed Program for Landing Helicopter Assault LHA ships. Brought us to Norfolk, Virginia, but the LHA concept was canceled when a new CNO took office five months later. I was then ordered to duty with the U.S. Uh, Atlantic Fleet Ordnance Handling Safety Assistance Team, OHSAT. OSAT. The OSAT team was So, I want to interrupt. You got those backwards, didn't you, Pop? Didn't we go to Virginia and then go to Cuba? Not Cuba, then Virginia? Pardon? Okay. Did he go on a ship and we went to Alabama? Is that what he meant? Or did he get it? No, we, 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 we got some more. I think it'll all come together for you. Oh, okay. All right. The OSAT team was tasked with assisting fleet and shore activities in ordnance safety and security. The OSAT was constantly deployed serving the fleet and shore commands. I suffered a pulmonary embolism during this tour and was on limited duty for six months. Upon receiving a medical relief, I was returned to full duty. My youngest son was born, Lance Damon Smith, this guy right here, during the OSAT tour of duty. The team visited Navy bases and fleet units throughout the Atlantic and European theater. The OSAT visited underway fleet units by helicopter insertion, lowering members by wire. Hornet safety and small arms security was enhanced by OSAT. I was ordered to U.S. S. Kennedy CB-67 duties at Norfolk, Virginia following OSAT duty. Yeah. I reported aboard CB-67 as a lieutenant to be the air gunner engaged in flight deck operations. The ship was completing overhaul at Portsmouth, Virginia shipyard. So, I, I can't help it. You know me. Yeah, it's important. Okay, so Lance was born in Virginia. Then we moved to Cuba. Lance was alive in Cuba. So, you... You got your history, a little... Is that right? And we lived on Kenneth Road. Yeah, we lived on Kenneth Road. Lance was born. Then we went to Cuba. And then you went on the Kennedy. So you were on the OSAT team before you went to... Um, but that was, that was... that was. I don't remember the Kennedy. I don't remember the Kennedy. We, knew, we lived in Tuscaloosa, Dad was stationed no. on the JF Kennedy. Oh, that's right, that's right. Okay. All right, well, we're, 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 it gets confusing there. I went to... Uh, the landing helicopter assault ship, uh, USS Guam. Mm -hmm. the, that concept was canceled uh, when the old CNO was no longer there. Okay. I was then ordered to the U.S. Atlantic Fleet Ordnance Handling Safety Assistance Team, which was based at Norfolk also, and. Lance was born, uh, we were living on Kenneth Road mm -hmm. uh, there, and uh, that was uh, when I had my pulmonary embolism, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, that was before we lived in Cuba. No, that was and, before uh, we lived in Cuba. Okay. Huh? But that was before we lived in Cuba. No. That was before we lived, that was... That was after we lived in Cuba. No, it was before, Pop. I think it was before. Because I was born in Virginia, came through it, then we moved to Cuba. I lived in Cuba with you guys, so. Yeah. But it, so largely, it kind of doesn't matter well, unless you guys want to hammer down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I, I, I thought I double checked everything. I do. I don't remember most, remember most of that. Well, you remember yeah. the, the, the big amazing. picture what stuff. Well, I. I I guess stuff I looked neat. all this up and wrote it from what I was reading. Okay. Know what, right? Okay. Uh, but anyhow, I went to the Kennedy uh, CV-67, and uh, from CV-67 we went. Uh, I went, We went to. Uh, Pensacola, Florida. And, uh, From Cuba, we went to Florida. Pardon? From Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, we moved to... Um, no, I'm so sorry. You, you're right. You were on the JFK, and then we were living in Tuscaloosa, and then we went to Pensacola. When you come off the JFK, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. I don't know. I was confused. 
Do you guys want me to pick it back up? Yeah, go. Okay. I reported aboard CB-67, that's the uh, John F. Kennedy, right? As a lieutenant to be the air gunner engaged in flight deck operations. The ship was completing overhaul at Portsmouth, Virginia shipyard. Upon completion of overhaul, we were engaged in sea trials and work up operations, including aircraft operations and ammunition on load. I was working for Lieutenant Commander John Olson, who was the Ordnance Handling Officer. So did you work with him in Vietnam? Oh, then? same guy? Yeah, I relieved him in Vietnam. Wow. And I, I, I brought it in here where I relieved him eventually <laughs> on the Kennedy then. Gotcha. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Olson was detached while on our med cruise and I became OHO, that's the Ordnance Handling Officer. I served as OHO and Beach Guard Officer during the deployment, being promoted to Lieutenant Commander. As Beach Guard Officer, I was tasked with security at the fleet, landing of the countries we visited, and worked with the Shore Patrol, host nation security personnel, and with the ferry crews serving the ship. My duties with Beach Guard was done in France, Greece, Spain, Egypt, Israel, and Italy. Wow. Upon return to the U.S., I received transfer orders to Pensacola, Florida, as the weapons officer and bomb search and prevention officer. Once again, we were, were required to live on the base. Duty at Pensacola was probably the most serene and enjoyable that we had. After Pensacola orders were issued to Siganella, Italy, as weapons officer again, we were required to live on base. U.S. tensions with Libya were tense, and Libya fired a few missiles at Siganella, but none reached the island. Siganella weapons had advanced sites in Greece, Portugal, Italy, and Sardin Sardinia. Ships of the U.S. Navy were replenished of ammo by Siganella ordnance and gunner's mates. Our fleet of trucks moved thousands of tons of explosives in support of the fleet. Our support for the Army and the Air Force as well as special warfare units was noteworthy. Our support for special operations required long hours of dedicated personnel. Ammunition storage sites included magazines, tunnels, and special hardened areas. We experienced Russian aircraft, aircraft flights over our base and operations on a daily basis. NAS Siganella was the site that was utilized to force down aircraft carrying terrorists that had killed U.S. citizens in the Mediterranean. A three-year tour at Siganella was challenging, but very productive. Orders to to Commander Naval Air Forces Atlantic was the site in Norfolk, Virginia that I retired from. Fleet support was the mission and was accomplished always. Do you all remember, boys, the, the tunnel we went through when we was in uh, Sigamella? We, we went to... It's like uh, Palermo area. I, remember, yeah. I don't know. Were you with us, Derek? Yeah. And that was neat. It was like, I put us remember. on those trolleys, remember. right? We went through yes. the big mountain. And I remember you, I mean, we didn't have that much overhead, and we were flying through that tunnel. Uh, and, and you kind of ducked down like this, and the guy that was in charge of that tunnel, which was a, an Italian, he, he was a civilian Italian, and he, uh, he, Carter, he was kind of Carter. making fun of, of Lance from ducking down. Oh, yeah? And I'm thinking, if he had brains enough to know it, he might have ducked, you know. I mean, all you need was just a small bump and it killed you, you know. And Lance, looked, I don't remember what Derek was doing, either, but I remember. I was Lance. probably jumping up. <laughs> hit me, hit me with your guns. <laughs> hit me, hit me. I remember, like, going back to school and we go through those tunnels and, like, there was something about it. Everybody tell some story or, you know, like what you'd done over the last week or over some vacations. Like, it's so weird, but I remember like, geez, I think there might have been like really important weapons in those tunnels. I probably better not say about anything about it in school. So I didn't tell him anything about that. We went to Palermo, we checked out a castle, you know. But I kept that job going to pocket keys. I was protected American security. I was in third or fourth grade. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, there wasn't too many kids your age that got to go through that. No, no, no. Or Derek's age either. Uh -huh. And, uh, yeah, they kept a lot of uh, uh, bombs there. Yeah. And that was quite a feat. 
The, the Italians built those tunnels to store.